Do you want to know how to add products to Shopify? In the next few minutes, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about how to add variant products on Shopify. My name is Elise Nelson, and I help tech challenge makers build a profitable e-commerce brand. Thanks for joining me on my YouTube channel where I offer lessons that are 15 minutes or less to help you grow your e-commerce shop. In this short video, I'm going to share with you how to add sizes to products in Shopify and how to add color options on products in Shopify. But before we jump into this maker lesson, I'd love to know how many products you have on your website. Leave a comment and let me know. All right, so we're gonna be jumping into the product page here in the back end, the admin area of your Shopify site. So if we come into products, if you already have products, you'll see the listing of products here. And I just briefly wanna go over how you can filter these products to find the product that you're looking for. So you can go all active, draft, or archived, and it'll show you the products that are in each of those categories. You can also filter by the vendor. So if you have multiple vendors, you can filter by that. You can filter by what they're tagged with. So if you're using tags, their status, so it's gonna be active, draft, or archived. So that's the same basically as cleaning up here. And then you can use all these other filters as well. So if you know what collection they're in, you could just show that specific collection, um, vendor tagged with all of these are here. And then you can also sort A to Z, Z to A, the oldest created, the newest created, all these different ways that you can sort. You can sort by low inventory. So if you wanna see what you maybe need to make more of, this is a great way to sort that way. Then you can also use this search. So if you know your product is called a specific thing, like let's say I wanna see my original double click. I could put in original and it would pull up every product that has that in the title. So you can see all of these say original in them somewhere. So there's multiple ways to sort here on this page. Other things that you can do here is you can import and export products. And then you can do the all important add product. So this is how to add products to Shopify. You go to the product page and you click on add product. Then you're gonna to wanna to go in and fill in all this information. So you'll put in your title and that's gonna be what shows up as the title of the product. Your description will be what shows up in the description part of your product. You can add media, so this can be images or videos. After you have imported your media, you can also set up your pricing. So your price is going to be what actually shows as the price of the product, okay? Which I know may, sounds like it makes sense. But that what this means is if you're doing a sale, you would actually put the sale price here because that's the price you're gonna charge for the sale. And then the compare at price would be the regular price. If it is not on sale, then you can leave the compare at price alone and only fill in the price. Then you can decide if you're gonna charge tax or not. And then you can put the cost per item. Now this is really helpful because if you can fill this in, then when you're looking at your analytics, you'll be able to actually see how much money you made on these sales, not just how much you sold in revenue. So that can be really useful. Um, if you are including free shipping with your products, I highly recommend you include the cost of shipping here. For me, I only ship in the United States and I found that, well, it used to be 350, but now I think it's closer to 450 is like my highest depending upon where I'm shipping to. So I would include that $4.50 in my cost per item. Now what this means is if someone buys more than one item, you're actually overestimating your cost but I would rather overestimate my cost and underestimate how much I actually make than do that the other way around. So I include my shipping here because I have free shipping. Now that is free shipping across my entire store. If I was just doing free shipping at a certain threshold, I would not do this here. So take that into, into account how you wanna handle shipping if you're having free shipping. Then of course you can add a stock keeping unit or a barcode. You can determine whether you wanna track quantity or not. And you can also decide if you wanna continue selling when out of stock. So what this means is, let's say you only have three of something, but you can basically make them at any time. You can say you only have three in stock, but then continue selling when you run out and just plan to make more. If, however, you only have three, then you definitely don't wanna uncheck, you definitely wanna leave this unchecked so that it will only allow the sale of three of these items. And then tracking quantity is basically going to determine if you can see how many of the specific product was sold. Then you can put your quantity here for the overall product. So if this is a product that does not have variations, you can totally put your quantity here. And then you're gonna mark whether you're actually shipping this item. So if you are shipping something, then it counts as a physical product. If you are not shipping something, then you would uncheck this box. You can fill in the weight, the country of origin, and anything you need to know for customs information here. And then we come to the options. And this is how to add sizes to products in Shopify 
and how to add color options on products in Shopify. This is going to allow customers to filter products by variations if you're using Shopify 2.0. If you're using Shopify 1.0, you will they will not be able to filter by these options. If you're using 2.0, they will be able to. Before we jump into the rest of the lesson, please like this video and comment with the word options. Also, be sure to stick with me to the end of the video to learn your challenge for today and implement what you've learned. All right, so if we go ahead and check on options, we will have an option name and an option value, and then you can add additional options. So for example, if you want to have size as one of your options, and you would have small, medium, and large. Then you would hit done. And you would be able to see that I have a small, medium, and large variant. I can change the price, the quantity, the SKU, and the barcode right here. I can also click edit to get access to more of the items, or I can delete one if I need to delete one. Now, if I also wanna have color, I can add another option, and I can have it be color and I could do black, blue, and yellow. And then you'll see that it updates your variants to include small black, small blue, small yellow, medium black, medium blue, medium yellow. So it'll update all of your variants. Now, once you have completed filling all of that in, you have to have a title. Then you can hit save and you will see this new little thing here that says add variant. So at this point, if I wanna edit anything about my products, I like to go and click on add variant because it takes me to where I can see absolutely everything about every product. And it allows me to add different options to each variant. So things like adding a shipping weight on products would be, I could edit this on every product. So I would come over here to each variant and let's say that you have a mug and it is available in an 11 ounce or a 15 ounce. Well, those are two different size boxes. Those are two different weights. The shipping cost of that is going to be different. So being able to come into each variant and scroll down and change the weight so that the shipping will match is really important. You can also change the price on each individual item. So let's say you have 12 different colors and for whatever reason, one of those colors is not selling and you just wanna clear out your stock. You could change the price of just one color and that way that color is at a different price than the rest. You can also give different SKUs and barcodes for each variant. You can change your tracking of quantity on each variant, so you either want to or don't want to change your quantity uh, tracking. You can also change whether or not you sell when out of stock. So maybe you keep red and blue on hand, but if you, if you run out of pink or purple, you can't continue making those or selling those. So maybe some of the variations you wanna continue selling when you're out of stock and some of them you don't. By coming into this area, you can actually change that on each individual variation. So that's everything here. You can also then hit the back arrow to go back to your main product listing. And then the last thing in this column is the search engine listing preview and you can click, and you can click on edit website SEO. And that will allow you to change the page title that'll show up for SEO, for search engines, your meta description and your handle. So if you have a really long title, but you want your handle to be something short, this is a really good place to come in and change um, before you publish your listing. Now, if you want more help with your e-commerce brand, subscribe and sign up for notifications so that you don't miss any of my videos that are 15 minutes or less to help you grow your e-commerce shop. Now, we've got this, other, this other, other column over here with additional information that we wanna make sure that we check. So we can change our status. So this is gonna be between active or draft. So if it is an active, that means they can view it on your website. If it's in draft, it means they cannot. You have your sales channels. So if you are selling in more than one place, so your online store, Facebook, Google, Pinterest, et cetera, you can choose which of those this is available on. You will also be able to set up your product organization, including your product type. And your product type in Shopify 2.0, you can actually use to filter your products. So by using a product type, it will actually help you with filtering for your customers when they're shopping your website. You can do things like necklace, earrings, whatever. You can also set your vendors, so if there are multiple different vendors that you're coming from, and the vendor is a way to shop, to filter your products in Shopify 2.0 as well. For collections, if you are doing manual collections, then you will be able to select your collection here. If you are not doing manual collections, you will not select your collection here. You will then instead have those auto-generated based upon whatever you use to create your collections. 
and I had a previous video, actually the video prior to this one, is all about creating collections. You can go and watch that for more information about manual collections versus automated collections. Next, we have our tags, and this is a way to further classify your products in the admin area in Shopify 2.0. So this is really for your own use. If you're on Shopify 1.0, then customers will be able to filter their products using these tags. So you wanna keep that in mind when you're creating your tags that your customers will be able to see these if you are using Shopify 1.0. Even if you're using Shopify 2.0, I still recommend making your tags be formatted in a way that you would not mind your customers seeing because you may want to use those in some way to filter your products in the future. You can also use your tags to automatically assign collections using automated collections. So your tags will be really important how they're spelled and how they're laid out for that case as well. And then finally, you get to your theme template. So when you start out, all of your products will be under the default product template. But if you add additional templates, which we'll be talking about in a future video, you'll be able to select those other templates from here as well to determine what your product page looks like. Now today's question was, how many products do you have on your website? Leave a comment and let me know. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this playlist to learn more about how to build a website for sales. Plus, be sure to download the website theme comparison checklist to determine if the platform or Shopify theme you're considering checks all the boxes. The link is in the description. Your challenge for today is to add a direct link to two other products near the top of the page on every single product page so that you are directing your customer down the path to purchase. Remember, they either like what they're looking at, in which case you should sell them something to match it, or they don't like what they're looking at, in which case you should sell them a similar product that is different. Now, as always, I'll be doing another giveaway for commenters this coming Wednesday, so be sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and that you comment on the new videos that are released every Thursday and Monday. This Wednesday, the lucky commenter will win a free ticket to the social media sales challenge. Best of luck to you all. Don't forget to live your dream every single day.